Hi, I'm Jenny Brandon, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the world premieres of new works for the solo bassoon. These works were written by composers who participated in my online summer composition workshop series, Writing for the Solo Instrument. And during this five-day workshops, composers got a chance to write a brand new work for the solo bassoon. They got a chance to work with Kristen Schillinger, who will premiere these works today, and got to learn all about the great things that the bassoon is capable of. During the workshop, the composers also got to participate in talks on the art of collaboration, the business of music, and being a composer in this socially distanced world. And so today you'll get a chance to hear these brand new works, and I hope that you'll take a moment to get to know these composers. And if you're interested in these works, I've included their contact information so you can reach out directly to them about getting a copy of these new pieces. So thank you for joining us today for the world premieres of new works for the solo bassoon. Hi, my name is Agita, and I'm the composer of Noctiluca Sintalans. So the title of this piece refers to a um, bioluminescent marine-dwelling single-celled organism that is more commonly known as the sea sparkle, which is a fitting name because when it blooms or when its population increases, it causes the sea to glow and sparkle with this gorgeous bluish tint. And that's what I try to capture with this piece that um, sparkling quality of the water and also the pushing and pulling of the glowing waves. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello, my name is Yuta Tanaka. I'm a composer. Uh, for the solo bassoon concert, I wrote a piece titled Pandora. This piece portrays the Greek myth surrounding Pandora. In Greek, it means all gifts. She was sent to the earth by Zeus with a box, which he told her not to open it. At first, she enjoyed life on earth, but eventually, 
She opened the box out of curiosity. The box released all sorts of evil to the earth. However, Pandora finds that hope alone stays in the box, which tells her not to despair. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
pieces for the scene, and it is composed for the summer workshop with Jenny Brent. And during the compositional process, I want to explore on the different phrasings and dynamics that the bassoon can produce. So the entire composition is divided into three short pieces or excerpts, where the first one is silence that emphasize on long notes. And um, the second one is called motion, which articulated on the singing tongue notes and how different pitches will interact with each other. While the last one, motion, is specifically focused on phrases, short slur phrases, or phrases within the phrase, and how a performer will interpret those phrases to produce a seamless flow and enjoy.
Hello, my name is Fernando Zuniga Chanto and I am from Costa Rica. My piece Raindrops After the Storm depicts a journey in a rainforest after a storm has passed when it is still dark and all the trees are still wet and dripping. We start the hike in the forest and raindrops are still falling from the trees. Suddenly we feel the melancholic mood of a dark sky that slowly starts to turn into a feeling of sensuality. Noises start to build up from the jungle and it becomes a mixture of horror and panic. And as we run to escape all that noise, we finally reach a clear path and get to appreciate the sunshine of a clear sky. In the piece, there are a couple of techniques used to represent noises in the forest, such as flap tonguing, hitting the reed without making a sound, and a few multiphonics. This piece was written under the guidance of composer Jenny Brandon and with the collaboration of bassoonist Christian Schillinger. Thank you and enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hello, I'm Ian Weiss, and I am the composer of On the Edge of the World. You must have seen me last week in the Flute Week, where I also wrote The Gatekeeper. Now, these two pieces are somewhat similar in some ways, but let me explain. I go to school at New England Conservatory, and I also work at the New England Conservatory Prep School as the Theory Department Assistant and the Teaching Assistant. So I go and I do tutorings with younger kids on music theory topics and have a couple private students do some stuff that needs to happen when the teachers are working in their main classes. So I have to drive into the city every Saturday, well, except for when all this is going on, but I think we all get that. <laughs> anyway, uh, in order to get into the city, I have to go along a place called Quincy Shore Drive. It's right against Boston Harbor and it can get pretty hairy at some points when it's in the middle of January and there's a winter storm going on. So I was driving along and suddenly a storm surge starts hitting Quincy, which is just south of Boston, and Wollaston Beach, which is Quincy Shore Drive, is getting overtaken by water from the Boston Harbor and you see waves coming up and over the shore berm onto the sidewalks and white caps going everywhere, wind howling at like 40 miles an hour at some points, 50. It, it was a bit of a mess, but it was a scene that I never quite forgot because that happened more than once. And you just kind of learn to deal with it when you're in New England and it's really, really bad. But I wanted to replicate that feeling of being on the edge of the world in the middle of, quite frankly, a scene that would scare quite a lot of people. A lot of wind, a lot of rain, a lot of storm surge, gray water splashing all over the place. It was a bit hairy. I hope I captured that feeling in this piece. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Adrian Albert. I'm a composer living here in Southern California. I've just completed a piece called Serenade for Christian Challenger. I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with Christian over the years a number of times, and I'm very excited about hearing her perform my Serenade for the first time. I also wanna thank Jenny Brandon for an absolutely sensational class. Thank you so much, and I hope you all enjoy hearing serenade.
Hi, I'm G. Edit number two for solo bassoon is my piece for tonight. This piece was inspired uh, during the workshop week with bassoonist Christine and mentor Jenny and brilliant fellow composers. I wanted to bring a more beautiful lyrical line from the bassoon and I was hoping to encourage performers to express themselves in the piece. I hope you find it interesting. Enjoy the concert. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maggie McGinnity, and this is Kieran. There you go, be free. Kieran is a tuxedo cat, and the other day he meowed a couple of meows that I thought were particularly melodic. So I sang them back to him, and then I pulled out my piano keyboard app on my phone and found those notes. And those notes make up the first notes of my piece, Sneaking Around. Kieran and cats in general inspired me a lot while writing this piece. Another source of inspiration was TV shows. I've been rewatching Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and every character on that show is sneaking around. Some are putting secret evil plans into motion, and others are trying to quietly foil those plans, and a couple are just sneaking off from the group to go make out in a broom closet. There's something fun about watching other people be sneaky and being in on their secrets. People can sneak around with a lot of different intentions and a lot of different outcomes. I chose the title Sneaking Around because I expect each performer and each audience member will have a different interpretation of the phrase and of the music. I personally envision this piece taking place in a dark city alley at night, but it could be about someone trying to destroy the world, or a secret rendezvous, or just a cat trying to get into the cabinet under the sink without you noticing and then protesting his innocence. I hope you enjoy this piece. I'd like to thank Kristen Schillinger for her collaboration and for premiering this piece. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
просто. Ту-ту-ту. Ту-ту.